What's up, everybody? Erock the Red here, bringing you episode 21 of Gaming News Weekly. As always, let's get into it with our new releases from last week. A couple noteworthy titles came out last week. Uh, the first one being Atelier Ryza 2 Lost Legends and the Secret Fairy for PS4, PS5, Switch, and PC. That is an impressive title. I'm not familiar with this series. I know it's a, a huge, long-running JRPG. I've just never been super into the JRPGs. I'm learning. I'm, I'm getting. I'm getting to uh, experience them, and I'm enjoying them. Um, this one is reviewing very well. Currently, 85 on Metacritic, and uh, it's set three years after the first one with the character Ryza. Uh, that you control and it's your classic JRPG everything you'd expect from them and more uh, my understanding is if you're a fan of this series or if you're a fan of the first one you'll like this because it's just more of the same but they they really tightened it up and nailed a lot of it so um, you know if you're a JRPG fan or a fan of this series I'm sure you're already familiar with this game so um, let me know how it is Next up, we have Cyber Shadow. Came out January 26th for Switch, PS4, Xbox One, PC, and PS5. This is a little game by Yacht Club Games. These are the guys that brought you Shovel Knight, another classic roguelike 2D game, uh, similar to what this is. Now, uh, in this, you play as a ninja, and you have to go through these beautiful 8-bit handcrafted worlds uh everything all the sprites were, were handcrafted the pixel art is beautiful um the soundtrack is amazing everything i've heard about this game if you're a fan of this style you're gonna love this game it's it's very meticulously crafted uh getting great reviews currently at a 85 on metacritic um so definitely worth checking out again if you're a fan of this style game and next up the big one from this week the medium the reason that i'm debating getting an xbox or a pc or something i'm i'm very jealous of, of everybody with this game it is the latest game from bloober team i'm currently playing their last game and it is scary and i'm loving it you could watch some of my let's plays uh observer system redux fantastic game and they really know how to build a horror game, a world, a story. So this one set in an actual um, regular present day world about a medium who lives in both the, the physical and spiritual planes. The The gameplay dynamic for this is great. Both games are, are rendered, si rendered simultaneously so you could pop in and out of, of both the spiritual and physical plane. Very interested to to play this game eventually i'm hearing great things about the writing and the art direction it's currently sitting at a 76 on metacritic um, so definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of horror games and you know if you have xbox game pass this is included day one included in the system in the service very very jealous of that it's the running theme every week i'm going to talk about how i'm jealous of xbox game pass uh more on that in a little bit as there was some you know some some news on that front but um that's all i'm going to say about this game check it out i really uh i would love it if you let me know if you're playing this game what you think of it um and hopefully i'll catch it uh some video clips on the site and the last one i'd like to talk about Tohu came out January 28th for PC, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and Stadia. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I just picked this game. I wanted to show it off because it looks really adorable and it looks really different from everything else we're getting out right now. It is uh, a platformer puzzle game uh, set in these weird fish planets with these amazing looking characters and handcrafted worlds. From what I'm hearing, the puzzles are fun to do. 
the it's the composer that did the score for Hollow Knight, so I expect another uh, beautiful score to go along with the game. I just thought it looked really, really cool, and such a change of pace from all the other games we're seeing out there right now. So hopefully it's doing well. I couldn't find any real reviews of it, so may just have to play it and find out. All right, let's get into this week's news of the week. And I said earlier we'd be coming back around on talking about Microsoft subscription services. So let's do it. Earlier this week, Microsoft doubled the cost of Xbox Live Gold, the subscription, um, changing it from $60 for a full year to not offering a full year anymore and instead being $60 for six months. People were not pleased with this. And they let Microsoft know immediately. They changed their mind, went back to having the 12 month subscription being $60 and additionally are now allowing free to play games. You don't even need the live service to play games um, through the internet. So they, they did a full 180, maybe even more, maybe like a 200 on this and um, listen to the people. They issued a statement in it. They come right out and say that they messed up and are reverting the prices back to the way they were. And like I said, gave a little bit more as far as the free-to-play games. This was a weird decision by them to just out of nowhere double the cost of the service that you need in order to play games online. It was very strange. It's obviously trying to push them to their Xbox, the Game Pass Ultimate, which includes the Xbox Live Gold and that is $15 a month. So, you know, quite a bit more, but I mean, you get a whole bunch more for, I mean, with that service, like we talked about the medium, instead of the games that we were just looking at that you get just with uh, Xbox Live Gold. Although this month they are offering Gears 5, so pretty good month compared to what they usually offer through Gold. So, so I know if it were me, I'd be getting the xbox game pass ultimate just because i feel like it's a better value with all the games that you get but a lot of people just use the service just so they could play online with their friends and that's uh you know that's fine too so glad that microsoft came around on it it was really interesting to see what they did there speaking of gaming subscription services let's talk real quick about playstation plus just yesterday they announced the new games for february and it is a banner month First up, they announced Destruction All-Stars, a brand new game for PlayStation 5, a whole new IP um, where it's a multiplayer driving destruction derby. I don't know what it is. All I do know is I'm very excited to check it out. Looks like it could be a lot of fun. I hope they get a good player base and I hope the gameplay is fun. This could be the next Rocket League. Very excited for that one next week. Uh, they also announced Control Ultimate Edition for both the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5. This is the full game plus all the DLC. Huge get for PlayStation Plus. I platinumed this game earlier this year. Absolutely loved it. Never played any of the DLC, so I'm really excited to, to get back into it and play some of this DLC. And especially to see what it looks like on the PlayStation 5. I bet it is gorgeous. And then lastly, Concrete Jungle. It looks like a fun spray painting, painting, puzzle, adventure game. I don't know anything about it, but um, I'll definitely check it out. It looks, to be, it looks like it could be a lot of fun. In a little bit of surprising news, the Activision-owned studio Vicarious Visions was just merged with Blizzard. Um, now, Vicarious Visions is known for the Crash Bandicoot remake, as well as the most recent Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 remakes. So, um, you know, they were taken off for whatever they were working on. Uh, supposedly, they were helping out Blizzard with the next Warcraft game or the next Diablo game. It's uncertain. But they were put on Diablo 2, a remake of Diablo 2. Um, so that was also big news. It rumored a while ago, but there have been no details until now stating that it is true. So, I mean, 
It's great news for fans of Diablo, Vicarious Visions. We know that they are amazing at remaking games and building them from the ground up and capturing the vision of of the fans, uh, as shown with Tony Hawk. Um, but it's a bummer for people that would love another new Tony Hawk game. You know, they nailed that game. Uh, same with the Crash Bandicoot uh remake they did a, such a good job um, building those games back up so hopefully uh we'll get this diablo 2 and it'll be awesome and then maybe they could go on and make some other stuff but it was very surprising to see both that they were that they were merging with blizzard as well as diablo 2 remake is a real thing so uh very interested to get more information on that as it develops Next up, does anybody remember the game Biomutant? This game was announced back in 2018. We're finally getting a release date set to come out May 25th of 2021 for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Unfortunately, no next-gen consoles. Maybe they'll, they'll add something to them. Who knows? But I'm excited for this one. I mean, what's not to be excited about? It's kung fu mutant creatures in a huge open world that you fully customize. Like, right? It sounds amazing. We'll see. It's been in development for so long, and usually that's not a great sign. But the the idea behind this game could be a ton of fun. All The characters are fully customizable with mutations and weapons, prosthetics, all to help create like a better martial arts creature jury's still out on this one hopefully now that we've got a release date we'll get some more video some more news and hopefully maybe a beta or some gameplay footage we'll see we also got some interesting news on the next lego star wars game the skywalker saga this game sounds like it's going to be every star wars fan's dream it's the entire series playable any way you want it you could play through the campaign for each movie in any order um there's 800 characters in the game 300 of them are playable they're rebuilding the entire lego engine from the ground up brand new open world there's 28 unique locations from the star wars world so if if it exists in star wars you could probably go there so this game looks to be a lot of fun. No other dates for release. They just said later this year. So again, hopefully we'll have some more information on this soon. But until then, just go watch the Star Wars movies. And lastly, what would Gaming News Weekly be without some Cyberpunk 2077 news? Uh, just recently... CD Projekt Red released a set of modding tools uh, for Cyberpunk. Now, it's a very limited set, only a handful of tools. So the, the mods are, are pretty limited right now. There's been some cool ones that have come out already, though. Um, the addition of a mini-map, a third-person mode, cell shading, uh, realistic driving, weather... Uh, with like fog and rain and stuff like that, that that you could control and then they already had to shut one down i guess people were uh having sex with keanu reeves they were they wanted to do johnny silverhand and cd project red had to shut it down so very interesting stuff but you know i'm eager to see what people create Mods are the best part of some of these games, and it's the one thing that's kept games like GTA and Red Dead really popular. So, all right, that's it for this episode of Gaming News Weekly. As always, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments, and we'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.